Hi, I'm Terry from Arcan. In this segment, we're going to show you how to winterize your trailer. So, you're going to want to winterize after you're done with your last trip. The worst thing you can do is procrastinate on getting it winterized. Especially here in Alberta, the weather can change very fast. And if you're one of those fall or winter campers, you, you may need to winterize it before your last trip. Uh, just watch the temperatures and make sure that you get it done. You know, water freezes at zero degrees. Typically, you know, you get to a night of minus four and where it's minus four the whole night, at that point, your system can have damage to it. So, first thing we want to do when we winterize is we're going to want to drain all of our tanks, right? So we have our water heater tank, we have our freshwater potable tank, and we have our gray, black galley tanks, all right? So if you're getting it serviced or getting the winterizing done at a dealership, generally they don't uh, drain your black and gray tanks. Uh, you'll have to get that done on your own. So for this, we have already drained our black and gray tanks. Of course, we hook up the hose, pull the valves, get those all drained out, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and drain the, the hot water tank and your fresh water tank. So first things first, we need to locate the fresh water drain. On this unit, we have a sticker indicating where it is, generally located right below where the fill is. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the plug from there. Now, if, if it's too tight, you might need a little wrench, give it a loosen. And once you got it loose, you go ahead and pop that plug out of there. So now that we got that plug removed and that water's draining, we're gonna now drain the water heater. What do we do with this plug? I like to keep this plug in the water heater so I know where it is next spring when I wanna dewinterize my trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the water heater compartment. I'm gonna just store that plug in there. Now we need to remove that plug from the water heater. This has a suburban water heater equipped with an anode rod. This anode rod requires an inch and 16 socket to remove. So I have one of those here. If you have an Atwood water heater, it's gonna have a plastic drain plug, lower left hand side, and you'll need either a 7 8 inch or a 15 16 socket to remove that plastic drain plug. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that drain plug. Turn this to off. Okay, remove that. All right, now one of the things we wanna do uh, before we take it all the way out is we wanna remove the pressure from the system. If the system's under pressure, this plug can come out in a big hurry. So we're gonna open this pressure relief valve. And okay, so we release all the pressure on the system. Now that there's no pressure, we're gonna go ahead and take that plug out and let this tank drain. To assist in draining, you can simply open this pressure relief valve, allowing air into the tank, and you, as you can see, it'll come out a lot faster. We'll store that anode rod inside the water heater compartment as well. Now that, the, now that all our tanks are drained, we're gonna go inside and we'll need to locate our water heater and our water pump. This is right below this window in the back driver's side corner. So we're gonna find where it's located on the inside. So going inside the trailer, um, we're in the rear bedroom on this model and we have our rear emergency window. So underneath this bed has gotta be our water heater bypass. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this bed up. And under here, we do have some removable panels. So this panel here says, uh, it has a sticker saying antifreeze inlet, and this panel here is in relation to that window outside. So this is gonna be where our water heater bypass is. This has uh, screws to hold the panel in. I like to use a little drill, but if you don't have a drill handy, you can just use a screwdriver and undo these screws. So we get that panel removed, okay. All right, so we've accessed our winterized bypass for the water heater. The importance of this is we don't, because we only are gonna use two gallons of antifreeze, we don't wanna use six gallons to fill the water heater. Number one, it's a waste of antifreeze. And number two, it just dilutes the antifreeze mixing in with the water as it pushes out. So we completely bypass the water heater and only need two gallons. There's several different valve systems, a one valve, a two valve, or a three valve. 
If it's a one valve system, there'll be one single three-way valve at the bottom of the tank. It's simply on or off. If it's two valve, it's two three-way valves, one at the bottom, one at the top. And if it's a three valve system, there are three on-off valves, one at the bottom, one at the top, and one in the middle. So this is a two valve system. We're simply gonna turn these valves to the summer position, or to the winter position. So we go ahead and turn that valve there, turn that valve there. That's take, that's not, now that's allowing the antifreeze to come up to the valve, go through this bypass hose and out into the hot line without letting any antifreeze into the tank. So this tank is now set for winter use and winterizing, so that's set. The next thing we do is we wanna locate that water pump. If you don't know where it is, one of the things you can do is you can turn the pump on and listen for it and you'll hear where it is, then you'll be able to know where to access it. In this case, it's on the other side of the bed here. Again, we'll have to unscrew this panel. We simply unscrew the panel, remove the panel to access the water pump. Now, why, why it's important to access the water pump is we don't actually wanna pour antifreeze into the tank. One of the reasons we don't do that is there's square tanks with a round hole at the bottom. There's always gonna be a little bit of like water left in that tank. So if you put two gallons of antifreeze in the tank and there's still a gallon of water at that bottom of the tank, it dilutes it by 50%. So we don't want any diluted antifreeze going in the system. As well, that antifreeze won't drain properly and it'll stay in that tank and it's not good to stay in there. So by bypassing the pump, by removing the tank line, we actually don't have to put any antifreeze in the tank. We suck directly from the jug of antifreeze, not wasting any antifreeze. In this particular model, we actually have a pump bypass. So what that is, is there's a valve here, and this valve allows the pump to suck right from the tank. And if we just simply turn this valve, it has a hose here that we can stick in our jug of antifreeze. If your model isn't equipped with a pump bypass, you can simply create your own by getting a piece of hose and attaching it to the pump on the suction side. So if you don't have the pump bypass, what we have here is we have a pump. There is an arrow showing direction of flow. So the direction of flow goes this way through. So this is your suction side. So if you wanted to connect your temporary bypass hose, you simply pull this tab, remove the hose that's on the unit Take your temporary made up bypass hose, pop it into the pump, clip the tab in place, and now you're ready with a temporary bypass hose to place this right in your jug of antifreeze and suck directly from your jug of antifreeze. So we take our gallon antifreeze and we're ready to go. We stick our hose in the antifreeze and our valve's in the correct position. Now all we gotta do is turn the pump on and instead of sucking water from the tank, we're sucking antifreeze from the jug and we're gonna go to all your taps. All right, let's go turn that pump on. So in this model, our pump switch is located right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this pump on. It's gonna start sucking antifreeze from that jug. Now you're gonna go to each fixture and faucet in the trailer and run it opposite of dewinterizing. You're gonna run it till the water is out of the top and it's fully running pink. So we're gonna go ahead and open the hot side and we're gonna run all the water out. All right, now that that's running pink, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. And then we're gonna turn on the cold, do the same thing. Do you don't wanna let it run past when it turns pink because we don't wanna use up too much antifreeze that we need for the system, all right? So bathroom tap's done. Next thing we're gonna do is do the toilet. The key to winterizing really is don't forget a fixture or faucet. So to flush the toilet, we're simply gonna depress the pedal and we're gonna run the toilet until it's running pink. Once it's running pink, we stop and we're good. Now we gotta do the shower. So with the shower, you don't wanna make a mess with the antifreeze. Try and limit your spray to one area. There we got it pink, hot and cold. All right, now that that's running pink, turn that off. Okay, now we have the kitchen taps to do. 
So we're going to come through here. Same thing with the kitchen faucet. Hot. Get all that water out of the system. And when it's running pink, we stop and run our cold. All the water out of the system running pink and we turn it off. Now, a few key points not to forget is uh, what might be on the exterior. So in this model, we have an exterior shower, we have an exterior kitchen, and we have a black water tank flush. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we winterize all three of those components. So let's go outside and winterize those. So here we have our exterior kitchen. We just wanna make sure that we've run antifreeze through these faucets. So we have our hot, running pink, on our cold, running pink. All right, let's go around and do the outside shower. You just wanna get it running pink. Sometimes it's harder to see, so I like to hold it up against the, the wall and, and then you can see when it's pink against the white trailer pretty quickly. So, so we got it running pink on the hot and running pink on the cold. So the outside shower is done. So we, here we have our black tank flush on this unit. So it looks very much like your city water, but we have a label here saying it's our black tank flush. Because this isn't tied into the pump system, um, there's no good way to put antifreeze in there, but there is a check valve in there that needs to be winterized. So we, we're gonna need to use a hand pump just like this. So basically we're gonna take this, we're gonna suck directly from our jug of antifreeze, pushing antifreeze through that system um, to make sure it's properly protected for the winter. So here we have our hand pump. We're just gonna simply pump right from the jug of antifreeze into our black tank flush. So basically we're gonna hook this in to our flush. All right, so that's in there secure. We're just gonna put it in our jug of antifreeze. Helps if you have a stand to hold the antifreeze. And we're simply gonna pump. All it needs is about five or six pumps of antifreeze through there, and that'll be good for winterizing that check valve. All right, so now that we're done that, we only have a few more steps to go to finish up the winterizing. All right, so the system's fully pressurized with antifreeze now, so everything's good to go for the season. Uh, we just have to turn the pump off here. Now we're gonna take our jug of antifreeze off the suction side, so we're just gonna basically pull the hose out of the antifreeze so it doesn't suck anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hose from the antifreeze jug. I like to leave it just kinda of sitting right at the very edge uh, so that it doesn't drain on the floor. So one of the things I like to do now is I like to turn the pump back on and just let it suck some air and push some of that antifreeze out of the taps. It makes it easier to dewinterize next year. Also gives us a little more down the traps. Turn that pump back on. And we're just gonna push some of that antifreeze out of the taps. Get rid of some of that pressure, hot and cold. And we'll do all the taps, get a little down the drains. Hot and cold. All right, we can go ahead and turn that pump off now. So now that the pump's off, your unit is basically winterized. One last thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the little line from the city water is drained. So we're gonna open, with the pump turned off, we're gonna remove the pressure from the system. It's important to remove the pressure because we're actually gonna push the check valve in on the city water to allow some antifreeze to come out of there. So we'll leave those taps open, uh, leaving air in the system. So now we're here at the city water. All our system, our pump is turned off and we have our taps open inside to relieve pressure on the system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the little check valve in. It's very important that all the pressure is relieved on the system so that we don't unset this O-ring. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this screen filter. All right, so we got the filter out here. And right here we have a little white button. I'm gonna go ahead and push that. 
and it's going to drain out our water and a little bit of pink is going to come out of there and there we are uh, there's no more pressure inside our city water go ahead and put that screen back in so that's everything now we just need to wrap up inside all right so now we're done basically we got to finish up here so we got our hose here this one has the pump bypass so simply we'll just leave it in the position it's in and next spring we'll have to flip that for the dewinterize flip that valve if you have a model that doesn't have a pump bypass you're going to want to go ahead and reconnect the suction hose that you removed so remove your temporary bypass hose and connect the tank hose back to the suction side of the pump all right so we'll button that up so we have half a gallon antifreeze left here after we're done um, pushing antifreeze through all the lines so we're going to take this and we're going to actually just dump the rest of this down each trap so we're going to go ahead and dump this down kitchen sink shower trap bathroom sink and the outdoor sink so we'll take this and dump it down there and we'll also put these cover plates back in place uh, for next spring so we don't have them flopping around uh, while we take our unit for storage all right so now that we have the panels back in place uh, we're simply going to take this half jug antifreeze and dump it down all the traps so we're going to make sure that each p trap gets enough antifreeze in it so that it doesn't freeze over the winter so bathroom sink we'll get the shower here each trap needs about a cup of antifreeze we did push some down there during during uh, purging the line at the end a little more antifreeze is cheap so we get the kitchen sink now we have the outdoor sink and then we're done now that we're done renderizing one last thing you should do is you should uh, drain your holding tanks you've pushed some water mixed with antifreeze down there you want to make sure that that's just drained obviously you've previously dumped them everything's clean so we're just going to open them up pull the valve and let that excess water and antifreeze that's mixed drain out and uh, then you're good in case any of that gets in the pipe you see there was only a little bit in there but anything that it pushes any of that water that gets pushed down there is a good idea to, to let that out all right let's go wipe out the sinks all right so we'll get these sinks wiped out so there's nice and clean for the spring just get that antifreeze out of those sinks especially the plastic sinks there is the potential for some staining so get that all wiped clean nice and clean and then we'll get the shower all right so now that we have all the sinks wiped clean we're basically done there's a couple things that aren't on this unit so this unit isn't equipped with an ice maker in the fridge as well as it's not equipped with a washer dryer if you have a refrigerator with an ice maker you're going to need to winterize that as well uh, follow the instructions in the owner manual drain that ice maker make sure that it's not freezing as well with a washer dryer you're going to need to run that washer through a pump cycle so warm water start it get some antifreeze pumped into it and then turn it to the drain cycle to drain that pump as well you're going to put a little bit of that extra antifreeze at the end down the washer drain to make sure the p-trap and the washer drain is done well that's basically winterizing if you have any questions feel free to give us a call or stop by one of our many locations and we'd be happy to help thank you very much